Harden Volume 1, 2016. The one that started it all. Innovative model. Well received. Harden Volume 2, 2018. The follow-up. Different for sure. Made famous for this step back. My mind is going a mile an hour. Oh. Harden Volume 3, 2018. Basic. To me, a step back for the signature line. A lot of y'all didn't seem to think so, but we have a right to our own opinions. Harden Volume 4, 2019. Did Adidas just redeem the Harden signature line? This is Topic Tackle. Let's go. What's good, people? JC3 here, and I want to let you know that patience pays off, all right? The Harden Volume 4 dropped a little over two months ago on October 12th, and I'm just making this video now because, well, I needed time to process my thoughts and come to a definite conclusion. I've tried this shoe out multiple times, I've read up on the tech, and I've watched James Harden himself talk about it. The most important thing for me, make sure it's durable, making sure that I, you know, when I'm doing my step backs and Euro steps and crossovers and all that good stuff, that the shoe feels like it's, you know, it's still on my feet. And it's basically going wherever I go. And my first reaction was a flop. I'd only seen it in this team gray colorway and it looked cheap to me. But then I said, hold up, you know what? Let me give this a minute. And Adidas came through with the story inspired colorways. Senior director of Adidas basketball footwear Rashad Williams says the pink lemonade colorway is one of Harden's favorite drinks. Candy paint is a nod to Houston and their affinity for candy paint on their cars. Cookies and cream is inspired by his favorite ice cream. Most recently, the line's most notable colorway, the black and gold I'm a Be A Star released, which gives a nod back to the note that James Harden wrote to his mom at age 14 saying, PS, keep this paper. I'm I'm gonna be a star. So yes, there are no shortage of colorways in the two months since the Harden Volume 4 released, and I must say, they look good and tell stories, which I feel like is a must for signature shoes. You know, the 106th Street is where I was outside as a little kid playing basketball on the street. Then Hacienda, but my dorm room when I was a freshman, when I was 17 years old going to college. Hashtag go with your move on the outsoles and nod to Harden's signature step back in different play style, and the recurring set of numbers signify his mother and grandmother's birthdays. I made it known in my review of the volume 3 of the lack of innovation I saw in the model. The lack of innovation came not only in the aesthetic of the shoe, but the tech specs as well, which are the most important aspect of a shoe as they relate directly to on-court performance. Adidas wisely ditched the thin, nearly non-existent boost in the heel for Light Strike and relocated the non-adjustable midfoot strap under the laces. Light Strike has been in the works for 5 years at Adidas, and the transition to it in Harden Signature line has been in the works for about 2 years now, as this is how far out the adidas design team begins to work on hardened shoes light strike foam is adidas newest cushioning innovation and has only been featured in the laceless next level model it is roughly 40 percent lighter than a traditional eva foam while providing response and cushioning similar to top evas james has always logged a lot of minutes and this was on the forefront of williams mind while designing the shoe and by abandoning the boost the volume 4 becomes the lightest hardened to date and personally i like the feel of the light strike cushioning it isn't too soft where you lose all response and it isn't too hard to where it feels non-existent. A couple more tech specs. The outsole remains 3D printed, mapping out the areas where Harden applies the most pressure. A new customizable lacing system dons itself on the medial and lateral sides of the shoe. Williams and his design team sketched out different ideas on where this lacing system should be and extend to, and I believe they made the right choice by placing it where it is. When the lacing system extends down too far, like right above the outsole, it can cause some tightness in the midfoot area, which is something I experienced with the Volume 2s, a little bit of discomfort there. Adidas also focused on improving the lockdown in the volume four as Harden's game involves a lot of stopping and starting. He didn't want to have his toes constantly jamming to the front of the shoe so they improved the strap in the midfoot area. Also the TPU heel counter is what locks the foot into the shoe so there's freedom to make every move on the court without fear of the shoe falling off. And finally the overlay on the toe box in my opinion it looks more premium and suede with certain models as opposed to this plastic material but either way it keeps the foot locked in and it does not allow Harden to roll out. Overall I think the volume four is a great bounce back shoe for the Harden line. It seems to be hanging in there with Harden this season through all the big nights and many moves. Just don't tell James he's traveling though. Traveling. It's controversial. You talking about an airplane? Boom. Roasted. So let me know your thoughts on the Harden Volume 4 in the comments down below and we'll be back with more Topic Tackle coming soon. Stay solid people.